Uh, hello, I want to show uh, a short video on showing the virtue of using a route or a pathway uh, to navigate uh, across currents, primarily currents or strong winds uh, or hazardous areas, uh, rather than just activating a waypoint. So the question is, so the suggestion is we always activate an actual route rather than just a waypoint. But sometimes, sometimes indeed, just a waypoint is all we need. And in fact, since that happens often enough, especially when there's no currents or other, other things affecting your route, then it's very quick. What you could do is if you're here, this is, let's say we're somewhere starting up here in this Keystone Marina, and we want to come across here to Point Hudson Marina, this one in here. Now, uh, that distance, uh, let's see with our with our uh, ruler tool, how far are we going there? About three and a half miles. However, this is an area with a lot of current. If I click and turn on the current button here, let's see, you see here's four knots going that direction. Uh, you see here's four knots that way here. Oh, look at this, it's almost, that's almost five knots the other way. So in general, this is an area with very strong currents. So when you're in cases like that, then this point I'm making now is more important. However, so it has on the program, if we haven't, originally we recommended shutting this, this go-to waypoint, shut, shutting it off because we don't use it that much, but there is a button here for that. Or you can just right click and say, uh, go navigate to here. I think there's a button for that. Uh, uh, request uh, create a routing draw. Well, I don't. I don't see it right here. You can always put a mark and say navigate to the mark. But anyway, if you click this button, you can just. I click this button here, and then come down and say I want to go here. And I just. Oh, I didn't click it. Okay, click it, and then click it. All right, you see, now now I've signed up and that's the active waypoint. Now as soon as I turn on a simulator and start really navigating, it's going to tell me every, everything about this. Right now it's just it's just a navigation program. But now let's pretend we're in our boat and turn on a simulator. I'm doing here uh, uh, option S. I'm in a in a Mac. And so, so as soon as, okay, so we've activated where we want to go, or you could turn on the simulator and then activate this. But you see, it's telling me right now, as soon as I activate this waypoint, it's telling me that the distance is 3.4 nautical miles, and the course to that is 3232. But I'm now headed 242. So I would, if I want to drive there, I would, in principle, turn down here till I'm pointing at the mark. Now the course to the mark is 232 and I'm 233, essentially the same. And then I would just drive the boat. Now, that would be one level of navigation. But we're not We've learned more than that already. I've turned on here, which every almost every display system has. It shows the course over the ground and the speed over the ground. So you see, our knot meter says we're going 7.0, but we're actually moving 7.6. So something's affecting our speed, and that's usually a, usually a current, or you could, uh, you could have some leeway, could crank on some speed as well. But here's the other thing to notice. Even though I am steering, course through the water, 233, I'm actually making good 201. 201. So what's happening is I'm slipping, you see, and you can actually see the track. The track is going like this. And if I kind of keep looking which way I'm going, I see I'm going down here. And in fact, we have other tools that we could turn on. We can turn on a COG predictor, a COG predictor. And if we turned on the COG predictor, that's already helping us with this problem. But it's not going to help. In the end, we're still going to want our actual route. But we can, right now we're getting, we're getting slipped down here. And it's telling us, uh, well, it's still pretty much the same. But let's just say we didn't do much more. And we just, we're seeing this trail. We're actually 
not going, we know we're pointing this way, but you see we're going that way. But you've got to be sure to have this track on. It's fundamental in navigation to always keep that track turned on. Uh, that track turned on. Okay, so let me just pause the video for a couple minutes just to show if, if we hadn't done anything else. In other words, we, we put a waypoint where we wanted to go and, we, and the program told us which way to point the boat and we pointed the boat that way and we took off and we're headed. And we are somehow not noticing and our track is not very, is, is trying to tell us something. But let me pause the video for a moment. I'm back and so we've been navigating for about two minutes uh, I mean, two minutes since I shut the video off. And now when the navigator looks at the instruments and says, aha, I'm steering 233, but now the actual bearing to the mark is 238. So he's got to turn right a little bit. So he says, I want to stay on top of it. I'm going to turn right <coughs> and come back to the uh, proper heading. Course, uh, course to the mark is 238. I'm 237. I'm almost there, almost one degree. Okay, 239, 240. I'm just a hair above it. But if I'm, you know, there you go. So now I'm driving, and I'm right, driving right straight towards the mark. Right straight towards the mark. <coughs> and again, I'm going to just pause for another another couple minutes and then then come back but you see far as one one level of navigation is the program is smart it's telling me the direct it's telling me it's at 239 to the mark and i'm steering 239. okay i'm gonna pause and come back in a couple minutes go get another cup of coffee someone else takes the helm I'm back and this is actually a really good simulator because I actually did go and get a cup of coffee but now when the, the navigator looks at the looks at his screen to see what's going on here he says of course to the mark is 245 but he's now 239 so he's got to and normally he would really stay there at the wheel and stay right on the mark the whole time but I've got to turn right a little bit to get back pointed towards the mark so here the the point about this is that I want to illustrate is here's somebody, here's somebody driving a boat, driving a boat, and the whole time and they found the right direction to go with their, with their technology and so forth, and then uh, judiciously stood there at the wheel and kept the boat pointed right in the right direction. But look and see, look what's happened here. And I think that's enough to illustrate the point. In other words, even though you're keeping the boat pointed at the mark the entire time, you're getting way off your original track. So let me just uh, pause this for a moment. Let's see the best way to do this. Uh, I think what I'll do is just stop the boat and drift. Although, if I'm thinking in terms of real simulation, this is not a good place to stop. These are the traffic lanes. Uh, although we can, you can see clear weather, you see a long ways here. But we're right in the traffic lanes going into, this is the entrance to uh, Puget Sound. Uh, Admiralty Inlet into Puget Sound. So there's a huge lot of traffic. This is the incoming lanes and the outgoing lanes. All right, so here is this, uh, here's what I want to show. Let me just, let's see, how can I draw a line here? There's diff, well, okay, I'll draw a line because let's go back and say how we might want to do this properly. And that we would create a pathway, and I made one here, like, uh, Wait a minute, I showed this pathway. Is that gonna be right? Okay, yeah, so you see, we were here. And when we started out, we wanted to go this way, right down here like this, right straight this way. Now, we've actually drifted off course here. Uh, let's see the ruler tool here, some 0.7 miles, so off course. And so that's why it's not, even if you're standing there at the helm and you keep the boat pointed right at the target you've set the whole time, you could drift off course and get into all kinds of trouble. Here now is open water. It's not such a big deal. But there's other places where you could be like, um, you could be in a fog with reduced visibility. And you're still, you know the direction to the mark and you're pointing the boat right at the mark and so forth, but you're drifting. 
Whereas you see, if I'm in the fog, I can keep right. If I do this properly, I can stay bang on this track, right on this track. Whereas this way does not keep you on the track. So let's go back. Let me just uh, let me stop this simulation and then just show quickly how how one would uh, approach this. Command Option S. I stop that. Let me put the boat back uh, somewhere back up here where we start. Oh, now I still have this system here. Uh, let's see, go to Mark. Is that where we're navigating to? Yeah. So let me just delete that. Yeah. And just say, I've got my boat and I'm sitting up here or something like this, like this here. And now I want to go back. I'm still on the same route. I want to go to a point Hudson Marina. But in this time, I draw a route. Or in this case, a very simple route. It's two points. It's here to here. And that's the route I want to go. Now what I do is I can turn on the simulator. Uh, let's see, Command S, I'm turn on the simulator. And uh, we always end up headed pointed into the wind. Let's see, is that right? Yeah, see the wind's coming from, um, actually we're not at the moment. Let's see, the wind's coming from this direction. We're not pointed into the wind, so it's remembered where we are, we, we, that we've changed course, so that's not the case. But let me now turn around here Oh, we're under power and well we're drifting oh we've got no we got the engine on we've got the engine on so we're not really sailing so let me oh wait it's i'm all mixed up hang on just a minute i'm <laughs> someone's going to take the controls out of my hand here in a minute furthermore look at that i got in reverse so i'm going to go up here and go back to our seven knots that's a new function of the simulator so you can practice docking. You can actually go reverse now. All right, so let me turn around now and point roughly, okay, get, get around roughly to the right point. Okay, here we go. Now we want to go over here. And so, and we're going seven knots. So we, the boat's actually moving seven knots. This is a heading line that shows which way the boat's pointed. And now what I want to do is go here and activate this, activate the pathway. Now, which line did it go to the right one? No, it's gone back. Since I'm closest to this one, it doesn't know which way I'm going here. So what I have to do is tell it to go, uh, where is the next one? Activate pathway, next point of next point on the route. Okay, so now we're doing the right thing. The distance over there is 309, and the course to steer is 234, and I'm actually steering 252. But now, let's, besides this, let's crank on some more tools that we have. We have this reckoning tool. We can just go ahead and see, turn this on and put a projector out here and say, where am I going to be in six minutes? That's a six minutes is a reasonable time. Okay, is that six minutes? Yeah, I think that's six. Okay, so this is, now I got the COG showing where I'm going to be in six minutes. So I'm, I'm not going the right way at all. I can tell that. Here's where the boat's headed. So I've got to turn right, and I see exactly what I need to do there. So I'm just going to turn right, and when I want to turn right is when, uh, okay, just a minute. Okay, so from where we're a little bit off our original track, normally we would encourage, when you're in tricky waters, and here's, it's a good example. You see, I could stop here and head right back if I go back to the left just a little bit. You see, now I'm headed right straight towards the mark, but I'm not headed towards the mark on the path I actually decided at some point in life I wanted, which is this line up here. So really, we would recommend you really crank that boat around and get up on this path, you know, that you, you know, get up on the track that you said you wanted, you know, get on that track. You know, uh, I would, you don't have to go crazy and go clear right to the right or anything. But the idea would be to stay, the idea of navigation is stay under control. That you, you're the one under control. You don't just follow through with what you happen to have. You have a plan and you want to stay to it. And in this case, our plan was to be on, was to be on this line. So uh, we're going to just come gently down and get on this line right here. And then once we're on that line, then we can again fall off to the left. Let me just pause for a minute till we get back on that line uh, at this speed. Oh, 
That's an, uh, <laughs> that's not a real alarm. That's a public safety alarm here in Seattle. Uh, how does that? It's hard to know. <laughs> hard to know what to shut on and off. Anyway, that's not related to what we're doing. That's related to some alarm in Seattle. Uh, but let me pause. You see, the boat is now. The track is going this way. It's going to get on this track over here, and then. So I'm going to pause for a minute when we're back. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't have to do that really. Let me go. See, we're going here, and then once I get once I get back onto this track right here, then then I would go ahead and turn left turn left and head right back to the, whoop, I've overshot it. Okay, so you see, I'm looking at this line. This is my, this is the way I'm going. So now I've got that the, uh, the, dis, the direction to the mark, the direction to the mark is 233, and the course I'm making good is 232. Now, with that current, see, the boat's speed is actually seven knots through the water, but I'm fighting that current, you see. I've got current that is, which way is the current going? The current's going this way. Yeah, the current's going this way. Current's flowing this way. And you see how far I have to point. I'm pointing like 40 degrees in, well, what is it? It's not for, it, I can read it right here. I'm pointing 267. That is uh, uh, 30, 34 degrees into the current, just so I can track straight down this way. Anyway, so there you go. That is the virtue. Again, in some cases, you don't need it. You just click a button, navigate to it. You get the direction and distance and, and, and so forth. But when you want to have control over your navigation, it's always a matter of choosing a route. Make a route from w that you want to follow, and then you follow that route even to the point of, like in this case, it really wouldn't matter. You're out here, it wouldn't matter. But uh, there's waters up in Alaska in the narrow channels with rocks and strong currents and everything where you're going to pick a route and you want to stay literally right on that route. Okay, I'll stop here.